Electronic schematic design is an essential part of hardware design process. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss every circuit diagram that we are going to use for our LoRaWAN based sensor data logging board that we are going to send for production. This is the second part of our hardware design series. We have a lot to cover today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. You can also join the electronic and mechanical design contest and win special prizes, so don't miss this chance. Alright, so in this tutorial we are going to discuss the schematic that we are going to use uh, for our uh, PCB design. Of course, we are going to use the uh, components that we have formed uh, in our previous tutorial. So you can have a look at that if you have missed it. Uh, so our board is going to have uh, STM32 WLE5 microcontroller that has uh, LoRaWAN connection capability. And for that I'm going to use this module from Rack. You can have a look at its uh, data sheet. It contains the microcontroller, its crystal, and all the related circuitry to power up the uh, microcontroller. And of course, we are going to discuss all the circuit diagrams that we are going to use in our board. Actually, this is going to be a very important part because schematic design uh, is an important part in hardware uh, design process. So let's carry on. All right, so for component placement, we are going to head to components uh, and then we are going to select the library that we have added before. Of course, we need to add that first in the file based library preferences. For example, we can add here capacitors, resistors, Schottky diodes. These components are going to form our schematics uh, basically. Okay, so we can start with connecting uh, the USB socket. Uh, here uh, we can see that most of the pins are connect should be connected to ground. And in order to use a common ground for the whole board, I'm going to use uh, a symbol with net. So this symbol is going to suit my need. So I'm going to place it over here. You can flip the component uh, with the space button. And then this part will be connected to the USB voltage and it's going to be 5 volt. Okay, so now we need to add 5 volt uh, net to these pins. And we can do that by copying uh, this symbol net. Uh, and of course, we need to change the net name to 5 volt and there's one more thing we can do here is to hide the uh, net name so every symbol looks like that will be the common ground and in addition to that so now here we can add the pull down termination resistors so I'm planning to add the uh, battery charging capability to my board uh, for lithium ion batteries and I can find the schematic of it uh, on its data sheet so I'm using this circuit and it also has battery charging uh, indication uh, LED. It is also good to have a battery protection circuit in order to protect our battery from degrading damage, overcharge and uh, over discharge. Uh, so I'm adding this circuit. Having a well organized schematics is quite good and makes it more readable. So I like to add blankets uh, to my schematic. So this can be done by going to place directives blanket and then you can add it whatever you want uh, depending on the circuits that you have in your design i will also have voltage divider in order to read uh, the voltage level of the battery i also need the header connectors so i can mount uh, the, the whole development board uh, on a breadboard and start development i also have uh, push buttons uh, and uh, leds for indication I also like to have uh, parallel capacitors uh, to the push buttons in order to get rid of the mechanical bounce uh, of the buttons. Adding pull-up resistors to the uh, push buttons is optional because uh, the STM32 has internal uh, pull-up and pull-down resistors, so, so I've added them just in case. So in my design, I would like also to have the ESP node board that I've designed before uh, connected to the STM32 uh, with LoRaWAN module. Okay, so here in order to connect uh, both the STM and the ESP32 microcontrollers uh, over UART, I'm planning to uh, connect them over these uh, two pin headers so I can add and remove this connection uh, whenever I want. So the B7 and B6 uh, correspond to this uh, UART uh, peripheral. 
So I'll connect these pins to the IO4 uh, and IO5. Uh, but uh, first, uh, let me connect the uh, headers uh, so it can be soldered uh, over the board that I'm planning to design. So one of these headers should be mirrored just like that. Of course, you may know that ESP32 has the uh, advantage of peripheral multiplexing. So I connect the UART pin uh, to to any pin I want uh, on the hardware so there's no specific pins uh, for your art peripheral which is quite great it's always good to have uh, onboard sensors uh, on our hardware so uh, I'm adding NTC to read uh, the surrounding temperature and LDR sensor in order to read the light intensity in order to know whether there is light or not uh, in the surrounding area where my hardware is located of course here it's important to connect the uh, analog pins uh, of the microcontroller that I'm using to the voltage divider pin of the sensor uh, so I can read the change of voltage uh, in order to obtain the temperature uh, and the light data from the uh, NTC and the LDR sensors. So for that I'm selecting the A10 uh, and B4 uh, for that functionality. The working principle of these two sensors is quite similar. Uh, so here in the LDR, depending on the light intensity, the resistor value of the sensor will change and that will change uh, the voltage value uh, at this pin. So this circuit will act as a voltage divider and this will happen uh, on that side as well. Depending on the temperature, the NTC will also change the resistor value of it. So here I'm using these two capacitors in order to smooth out the signal that my microcontroller is going to read over the analog to digital converter. So here are the parts that I have not mentioned in my design are the low voltage drop. So I've used this integrated circuit in order to lower the voltage from 5 volt to 3.3 volt. Uh, this is actually important if I'm going to supply my board uh, from USB type C uh, or from uh, the battery because the LiPo batteries or lithium ion batteries uh, have a voltage level of 3.7 volt uh, and this will be dropped to 3.3 uh, volt which is actually suitable for both the uh, STM32 microcontroller uh, and the ESP32 over here and the functionality of these uh, parallel bypass capacitors uh, is to smooth out uh, the uh, power lines so we have more stable uh, voltage in order to feed uh, our microcontrollers and here we have the LDO has uh, enable pin and it's pull up so it's always enabled so so for power switching here I'm using this PNP uh, circuit so if I have the uh, 5 volt uh, connected so if I have the USB connected uh, or, or my board is uh, supplied over 5 volt from some other source the battery will stop uh, feeding my uh, system so it gets charged and this circuit will allow the battery to feed my board uh, only when, when there is no external uh, power source uh, feeding my board okay so after completing uh, our schematic now we need to uh, designate uh, all the components that we have placed here so we can differentiate between them uh, in the PCB file and of course we can do that uh, from the tools menu annotations now all our components have a unique designator now we can send all these components to the PCB file and this, this is done this way so, okay so here I prefer to close all the room if I want to add room I add it manually okay so right now I have all the components uh, placed here of course there are some errors and they are related to the uh, design rules I will fix that uh, during the uh, PCB layout design and this is the topic of the upcoming tutorial so stay tuned for it and bye bye